Hey everyone, uh, welcome back from the break to the second session of uh, the Praise and Worship course. Um, let's resume uh, where we left off. Uh, go ahead and share the screen for us. Right, so uh, we concluded the last session with just understanding uh, the nature of the prophetic word, the fundamentals, the foundations of the prophetic word, and how the Holy Spirit is the foundation um, you know, of the prophetic word, and all the different uh, aspects of prophetic word and what the prophetic word does. Uh, it, it brings edification, it reveals God's plans, it stirs up and causes us to move in faith. It, it um, motivates and encourages us, it gives us strength. Um, it releases God's power, brings correction and restoration, conviction and repentance, and finally transforms nations. Now, this chapter is, of course, uh, both flowing uh, in prophetically in, in praise and worship, uh, which is the music aspect of it. Um, the prophetic word can also be released as a prophetic song. Right, uh, the prophetic song accomplishes all that the prophetic word does. Okay, uh, everything that we've spoken about, we've learned about what the prophetic word does. The same thing, the prophetic song also does. Right. Um, so let's move on. So, uh, what's the big deal? Why do we have to sing uh, the prophetic word? Right, the prophetic song. So in your notes, if you see, uh, you can also look at the notes, uh, the screen. Uh, the first point there is songs to the Lord. A spontaneous song to the Lord, uh, a love song, a thanksgiving, uh, a worship, uh, adoration. Uh, can you all tell me of uh, the one Hebrew word for praise, which is similar to the spontaneous song? Anybody remember? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a couple of words there. Tahila, Shabak. Um, Right, so uh, spontaneous song to the Lord. Uh, it's, it's simply sing a, a love song, uh, thanksgiving, worship, adoration, and overflow of our hearts. Um, I think it's Tahila, Divya. I think it's Shabak. Because okay. it's love lost in the beauty. So. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Uh, Psalm 33, verse 3, it says, um, sing to him a new song, right? Uh, a new song is sung when God does a new thing in our lives. Uh, God is always uh, doing something new in our lives, right? He's creative. He's not boring, right? He's always creating something. He's, al he's always doing something new. We just need to have the uh, eyes to see and the ears to hear, you know, of the things that he's doing new in our lives. And every time we experience that and encounter that and taste that, um, we erupt in a new song, right? Um, and one of my classic and favorite examples, when you see in Psalm 18, uh, we've read this before, Psalm 18. Um, uh, I'll just quickly go there. Okay. So, uh, Psalm 18 starts off by saying, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, right? But, uh, you know, before that psalm starts, right on top it says, For the director of music, of David, the servant of the Lord, 
he sang to the lord the words of this song when the lord okay when the lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies now we have a written record of that song psalm 18 uh, but it seemed like it was spontaneous right he erupted in this praise uh, you know of a uh, praise and worship when the lord delivered him right he tasted something new when god did a, a new thing in his life he was filled with a new song right because uh, the psalm 40 also says that verse 3 says he has put a new song in my mouth okay so we do not have an excuse saying oh i don't ha- i don't understand i can't sing i uh, you know i do- i don't have any song in me no but the scripture says the lord has put it he's put it's it's his deposited is it's up to you to you know encash it <laughs> right to to withdraw to withdraw the song you know so he we just believe that he's put a new song in our mouths a hymn of praise to our god in psalm 8 uh, we see that he has ordained praise right in our mouths he has ordained it he's it's, it's all set so um so erupting in in a new song uh you know asking the, once again the holy spirit uh, to lead you in this it's it's very crucial uh you know just praying that give me eyes to see what you're doing new give me ears to hear what, what what you know what are you doing new let me see the new things that you are doing in my in our lives because most of the times if not all the times uh we take notice of only the important things you know that we've been praying for we get it okay we see it so that that becomes a new thing but uh you know there are so many things that goes that can go unnoticed um there are so many things that god saves us from that we don't even know about we won't even know about right we give him thanks most of the times for the things that we know that he saved us from uh but i'm pretty sure there are things that he saves us from that we don't know even. so right it's a beautiful thing to sing praise to him to uh to uh to uh, to erupt in a spontaneous song um oops, sorry okay um let's look at this very interesting chapter in deuteronomy chapter 31 right you can just turn with me to deuteronomy uh it's an interesting chapter the 31 and 32 actually all the way out uh but here something very interesting happens okay it says verse 19 now therefore write down this song for yourselves now who's talking here it's god right it's god is teaching this song to moses and then moses has to teach this song to the people of israel right so now god is saying write down yourselves this song and teach it to the children of israel and put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of israel Therefore Moses wrote the song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. Right? Um so first Moses had to write it down, he had to learn the song and then he had to go and teach the song the same day. Um right and what is more interesting is that God is teaching Moses. <laughs> uh Yeah, I don't know how that lesson went. It must have been an awesome session, you know. songwriting session um but there's something uh, is is beautiful right again god putting uh you know a song of praise in their mouths uh, but actually let's just actually go to psalm 40 because uh, there's something there's another couple of scriptures that i want us to read uh, if you have your bibles handy uh, uh, psalm 40 verse 3 um i i want to read from verse 1 right it says i waited patiently for the lord he turned to me and heard my cry 
He lifted me up from the slimy pit out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth. Okay, you see, when you read verse 1 and verse 2, it's talking about, uh, you know, this, right? We sing a new song when we see God do something new in our lives, right? And it seems like David is experiencing that. He's seeing that God has lifted him up from the miry clay and has placed him on the rock to stay, right? Um, and then now, he says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. And now see the result of that singing. It says, because of the song of praise, because of this hymn of praise that I am singing, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. As a result of my song of praise, as a result of the song of praise, many will see the Lord of what he has done and they will see and fear, right? And that's exactly what's happening in, in Deuteronomy, right? When God's saying, write this song down for yourselves and teach it to the children of Israel, put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness, right? That they, that they may see and know and fear the Lord, right? That, they may, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Therefore, Moses wrote the song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel, right? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, another example of a new song, we see that Jesus singing to the Father as well. It's mentioned in Hebrews 2, 11 and 12. It says, for both he who sanctifies, that is, and those who are being sanctified are all of one. For which reason he, Jesus, is not ashamed to call them brethren saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Right? Uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? So, uh, <clears throat> so singing, uh, singing a new song, singing your own song is not as complex as it sounds or not. It shouldn't be as complex as we've made it. Right, um, but just before we get to a couple of examples here that's mentioned on the screen, uh, how many of us uh, have brought a greeting card and you know given it to someone? How many of us? Okay, just the two of us. Two of you. Okay. <laughs> I have. Yeah, do people even give greetings cards these days? You know. <laughs> right. Okay. So, where am I getting at? Uh, you don't just buy a greeting card, and you know from Archie's or Hallmark, and then give the same thing as it is. What do we do most of the times? Is the greeting card, we write our own message in it, isn't it? Although there is a message already in the greeting card that comes, uh, but you still take a piece of, uh, you know, take a pen and you write, right, you know, to that person what you think, what you what you feel, uh, you're wishing them, etc., etc., right? And that's pretty much with what, how a, you know, a new song or a spontaneous song, uh, you know, or a prophetic song can be, right? But even when you take uh, if a song like, say, uh, Here I Am to Worship or uh, No Longer Slaves or wh whatever it is, right? Uh, you make that song your own, right? You go, you, you fought battles with that song, <clears throat> right? Darlene Czech, uh, she says that when she was fighting cancer, um, she, you know, she, she would say she fought cancer with this, um, with the song I forget. Uh, you make in me Jesus brave. Name. I, in Jesus' name, uh, no. But she talks about "You Make Me Brave" by Amanda Cook, um, and and so as a result of that whole thing was, uh, you know, this "In Jesus' Name" was born. But she said during that time she 
went to war with that song, you know, and she made it her own. It's like you take that greeting card, you, you know, you just make it your own. Uh, you write your own thing, you know, it, it becomes one with you. And then, you know, you sing that uh, as a new song as well. Uh, right. So that, that, that there's power in singing your own song, people. Um, I hope you realize that by now. Uh, you know, the prophetic song, the second point there is the songs of exhortation to the people. Uh, well-known passages. And I think, uh, let's, let's go to the book of Ephesians and Colossians. And, uh, and uh, let's read those two passages one more time, which we read so many times. Right, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Okay, uh, look at the previous verse. It says, be filled with the Spirit. And then it goes on to say, uh, you know, release the songs. Okay, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Uh, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to the Lord, to the God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Let's go to Colossians. Okay, Colossians 3.16. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Okay, one more time. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Okay, uh, songs of exhortation to the people. There's something about congregational corporate worship us coming together and releasing these songs um, and songs that uh, and, and the prophetic song we also see in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 that, that the Lord himself sings over his people he dances and he rejoices uh, over his people right uh, wait, uh, sorry just give me one second Okay. Um, yeah, so the prophetic song uh, is, is also declarative songs, uh, warfare songs over demons, uh, circumstances, or nations. Um, in Psalm 8, verse 2, it says, You have silenced my enemies. With my praise, you've silenced uh, my enemies, right? And we see uh, in, in the chapter the power of praise, uh, the example of King Jehoshaphat, and how they started, you know, praising God spontaneously, right, which was must have been prophetic in nature. Right? It was a declarative songs, uh, you know, in warfare. So, uh, prophetic worship, prophetic song, releasing a new song, which is prophetic in nature, uh, it, it it leads us through the battles uh, of our lives that we face, that we have to endure, that we go through on a daily basis, and helps us come out victorious, right? So uh, that is the power of releasing a prophetic song. Um, and so the three points there is songs to the Lord. Uh, it's a song of exhortation to the people. Uh, people are encouraged, uh, right? They are, they are empowered. Uh, they are edified. And then it gives us, it leads us into victory for, uh, in our battles, right? Um, and so finally, now, just some practical guidelines on how do we prepare, uh, you know, uh, some practical tips, guidelines on how do we prepare to move in the prophetic? How do we take all of this of what we've learned and apply it in our daily lives? Um, it's just so fundamental. Relationship and walk with the Lord. Your intimacy with the Lord is key. Right, depth in prayer and in the Word of God. 
uh, there is no substitutions to this, right? Uh, how, you must be hearing about, about this in all the different courses and you must have had your, so many of your, even your, your own, you know, pastors talk about the importance of your personal, your relationship with the Lord, right? Uh, we don't pursue the gift of prophecy for us to look cool. Right? It's like, oh, I got the gift of prophecy. So you know, all of you all fall down before me. You know, um, It's not for us to be elevated. We need to pursue the gift of prophecy is just to you know take a piece of towel, put it on your hands, and you're ready to serve. And in all of this, you're giving glory to the Lord. Isn't it? Um, so there is no substitute or alternative for your personal walk with the Lord. That's how you prepare. Okay, uh, if that is not in place, uh, please, please, please get that uh, sorted right away. Don't delay it. Right? Depth in prayer and in the word of God. Okay, depth in prayer and in the word of God. Uh, if you, uh, there's the, there is APC publications on prayer. There's so many sermon series on prayer. And one of a uh, well-established, a well-known author, uh, from the past is uh, um, E.M. Bounds. He's written a lot of material on prayer. Uh, yes, we as worshipers, as Christians, uh, you know, people of all different ages, we need to get serious about prayer. Right? We need to understand and learn about God's heart for prayer. Right? Um, there's one very interesting thing that the disciples asked Jesus to teach after seeing him, you know, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, so many things, calm the storm and whatnot. Of all the things that the disciples could have asked Jesus to teach, they asked him to teach them to pray. Right? Now, if you want to learn something, say cooking, you go to... Uh, someone who's very good at cooking or a chef, and you ask them to teach me to cook, right? If you want to learn guitar, you would go to a, a guitar teacher who's very good in the instrument, and you, you would ask them to teach guitar, right? You don't go and ask a chartered accountant to teach you to sing or uh, play a piano, or you don't go to a chef and ask them to teach you to paint, right? You will go to an individual who's well established in that area, in their area of profession or in their skill, and you would ask them to teach what they know, isn't it? So disciples must have seen Jesus pray and pray and pray. They by now have realized that Jesus is a man of prayer. Right? Um, so depth in prayer and in the word of God are crucial. Just fundamental, basic foundations, uh, building blocks for us to prepare ourselves to move in the prophetic. Okay. Um, expectation, sensitivity. Uh, so what happens is you expect God to move through you. Okay. You expect God to move through you. Um, you, you just... Uh, it's like I'm putting myself in the line. I'm putting my trust in you. I'm putting my faith in you. And most often, it's the expectations of an individual that separates another individual with no expectation. Right? It's like age-old story of a farmer preparing his field, expecting the rain to come, versus the farmer who, who just did not prepare the the field and the rains came and nothing happened right so you you prepare your heart and uh, you prepare your heart for when you prepare your, when you when your relationship with the lord uh, is on point when you when you've been walking with him when your intimacy with him is on point uh, when you prepare yourself in prayer and in the word of god what you've done you've prepared and now you expect the rain to come and when the rain to come you know he's going to move through you right um And sensitivity. Right? We come prepared, expectant, and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right? It's 
possible to be preoccupied with worries, distracted by what's happening around us, and therefore lose sensitivity to the leading of the Spirit of God. And the same happens if the worship team is more preoccupied with getting the song right rather than listening to the, to, uh, to the Holy Spirit and singing as an offering of worship. Okay, uh, Being sensitive to the voice of God. Uh, you know, I give this example to the worship team uh, that I play with. Uh, this is an example, uh, the quote by Jeremy Riddle. He says, you prepare like it depends on you, but you lead like it depends on God. Okay, can I say that again? You prepare like it depends on you, but you lead like it depends on God. Right? In the context of a band, of a worship team, uh, in the church worship team, is, yeah, we meet for practice. We put we put the song list together. We discuss which key you're going to be singing the song in, uh, how many times the intro is, who's going to start the intro, who's going to be singing the first verse, the second verse, and whatnot. So we prepared ourselves, right? Like we are going to lead. But we're going to lead like it depends, you know, on God. Like he's going to lead us. Like, do you want me to sing this song one more time? Do you, you know, what do you, what is your heart? What do you want me to say now? Right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So being sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit is very key, right? Um, so, uh, I mean, these are all the things that we just mentioned, and it's in the notes. But before we just go any further, uh, you know, everything is being mentioned. Um, what I want us to do right now is uh, not just, you know, I just stop presenting. Put into practice what we've learned, uh, right? Is, is everybody doing all right? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, I hope everybody's able to gauge what's been happening. Um, thank you. I see your comments in the chat section. Um, so let's just. You know, quieten our hearts and settle our hearts right now. Um, everything that we've learned about the prophetic, uh, the beauty of the prophetic is that God is always speaking, right? Uh, and it's his great pleasure to speak with us, to communicate with us, right? Uh, it's and let's pray that we have the eyes to see and ears to hear what he's saying to our spirit. Amen. Uh, like the different impressions of uh, how the prophetic word is released, like an impression or a picture, uh, everything what we've learned, right? And what, the, what a prophetic word does. With all of that in mind, uh, what I want us to do is, um, I'm just going to play uh, like a pad uh, in the background, but... I want us to start receiving from the Holy Spirit. Okay, Let him minister to your heart. Now, let's say in 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes or so, um, if God releases a word, uh, you know, for an individual in the class, okay, go ahead and release that. Okay, this is after, say, 10, 10, 15 minutes or so. And I want you to write down, have a pen and a paper handy, okay? Uh, as, you, as you just wait on the Lord, be expectant, be sensitive to what he's saying, okay? And if you've never done this, it's like, oh, what is this? Only one class of prophetic and you expect me to move in the prophetic. It, it's not about us. Isn't it? So let your dependency uh, be on the Holy Spirit. Okay. So can I encourage us to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit? Right? Can we do that, everybody? Can we do that class? Right? Whatever it is you're doing, I don't know what you're doing. I can't see you, uh, but I believe you. Uh, <laughs> right? This is very important because I don't want there to be any distractions in your room, wherever you're at. Uh, I want your po the posture of your heart and the posture of your body as well uh, 
to be appropriate. Uh, so let's get right now, okay? Um, I'm just going to share the screen and play pads. Um, so let's just the Holy Spirit minister to you right now. Let's pray as we just begin. So Father, we are here expecting to hear your voice. We are dependent on you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your heart. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and move among us. There 
is no one like you in your faithfulness there is no one like you in your strength there is no one like you in your goodness there is none like you in your beauty god there is none like you in your holiness there is none like you father angels and the elders surround your throne they cast their golden crowns before you lord and so i cast my crown before you i bow before the king of kings
solely I feel free to raise your hand if you want to unmute and speak uh, so that you know yes it's a little go ahead <laughs> Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. <laughs> and in your presence, there is freedom. There is restoration. There is healing, Lord. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Raha, Shekhe, Raha, I can really sense the tangible presence of God. Oh, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so strong. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I just also feel like someone's heart is um, it's like burning of passion, uh, of desire for Jesus. Uh, there's like some warmth. This, uh, I don't know who it is. I don't know if you're even here. <laughs> but I feel like your heart is burning with passion and desire for Jesus. And, uh, and, and he's calling you to a deeper depths of intimacy with him um, and saying that there is more there is more what you desire is available it's like God is inviting you seeing a picture or, or an impression or a quickening of a scripture 
you can either put it in the chat section or feel free to unmute and speak. And 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 see la 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 Uh, I feel like God is calling someone, telling uh, you've again been uh, oppressing yourself or you've been having doubts of uh, of yourself but how am I going to do this how am I going to do this uh, or it's something to do with guilt as well maybe uh, how am I ever going to get out of this Okay, so two things. How am I going to do this for what God's called you to do? And then the other aspect is, how am I going to get out of this? And for which I feel like this is scripture coming out saying, God is calling you more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Think of all the conquerors in the world of history. Think of what, everything that they have conquered. You are more than them. You are more than a conqueror because I am with you, says the Lord. I just want to encourage someone uh, with this scripture from Joshua chapter 1. Uh, it says, God says, As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Everything may seem like it's changing, it's going happening too fast. Everything may seem like it's changing, it's in constant motion. While everything is changing around you, the only thing that is constant is me, says the Lord. As I was with Moses, the leaderships may change. Everything around you may seem like it's going too fast. As I was with Moses, I am the constant one. I will be with you, says the Lord. pray father we thank you for moving in our midst we thank you for doing a new thing in our lives we thank you for your presence god and we thank you for who you are we thank you for this privilege that we have that we can come into your presence and call you abba father we bless your name we thank you for everything that you're doing in us and through us lord Help us to help us to never lose the wonder of who you are. Help us to never get 
lose that wonder of who you are. Lord, we thank you, Father. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. Great recording. I uh, didn't realize the time goes so fast. Uh, thank you. That, um, yeah. Thanks for joining in today. Uh, I hope there was something you could take away. Um, just continue to prepare your hearts uh, for God to minister and expect him to move through you and he will. Amen. Awesome. Right. Thanks, everybody, for joining in for today's session. I'll uh, see you all next week. Okay, take a quick break for your next session. All right. Take care, guys. God bless you all.